Master Yarrow A knock came at Master Yarrow's office door while he bottled essence of snake root. Yes. He capped the vial, careful not to smudge his pristine glass tabletop desk as a girl entered. At first glance, everything about her seemed average. Her height, her weight, her appearance, and her dressings. At second glance, he noticed more of her imperfections, her slouched posture, her poorly restrained hair, and the wrinkles in her tunic. She didn't seem to be anyone of consequence, and he waited for her to explain why she interrupted his work. I'm sorry to bother you, Master Yarrow. I know how precious your time is. Guilt plastered across her face. She had his attention. I'm Master Plume, the newly contracted architectural mage. I was wondering if you had any texts related to the study of neurobiology that I could borrow. I need to learn it, and I wouldn't know where to begin. Foolish girl must have forgotten her robes. I never would have guessed she were a mage. Judging by her age, she must be fresh from the mage's college. An ignorant novice, then. Master Yarrow cleared his throat and straightened the collar of his silver robes around his shoulders. You wouldn't have asked me to teach it to you. I have a substantial amount to learn. It would take too much of your time. I'd be grateful for your help, but I wouldn't want to trouble you with trivial questions, Plume said. Master Yarrow turned to his shelf. I think I can find something for you. As he rifled through old volumes of works, she glanced around his office. I love your clock. It's so sleek. She admired herself in its pristine silver reflection. It keeps me on schedule, for certain. I can't understand how anyone arrives on time anywhere without one. I don't even know how I functioned before I bought it. I use the standard nails and candles, but that's more of an art than a science. Who made this marvel? There's a seller down in the marketplace that crafts wooden clocks, but I had them import mine from a Devorian manufacturer. Master Yarrow had known exactly where on the shelf he kept the text he'd be willing to let her borrow, but he pretended to continue searching for it. He coveted chances to gloat, and they so rarely came. Goodness, it's well worth the fortune it must have cost you. I see clocks rarely enough, but never one like this. He sensed her use of magic and jerked to face her. Pure silver. Lao himself would grovel over such a masterpiece. How often do you have to set it? She released her analytic magic. He relaxed, knowing Plume wasn't harming or otherwise altering his treasure. It really needs more than once every turn of the moons, but I'd do it every morning anyway. I would hate to normalize any deviation, no matter how slight. Because the minor deviations would compound into a larger divergence. Precisely. He extended the requested texts. Before he released them, he said, I expect you'll take as much care of my books as I do with my clock. There's nothing so precious in the world as texts of learning. I'll treat them accordingly. After Master Yarrow concluded bottling the essence of snake root, he received a message from Admonition to head to the dungeons. A sly smile split Master Yarrow's face as he left his office and descended 196 stairs to the ground floor and then another 14 to the prison cells. In the hidden dungeon for the most dangerous of prisoners, there were another 20 steps before he arrived at his destined floor. He was to deal with a new arrival, an infidel and dark warlock. It would be a pleasure to work on the man. Master Yarrow passed the first line of cells. The prisoners who associated his presence with tortured screams recoiled in their cages. He dodged swaying corpses, but he revered his creations. When Master Yarrow reached his favorite room, Master Vale, the prison's defensive mage, waited inside the door, along with the dark warlock, who had been stripped to his undergarments. Chains restrained the prisoner's arms and legs to a patient inspection table in the center of the room. Master Yarrow asked the dark warlock, What's your name? Master and Tortoise. A wither mage. Master Yarrow took a seat facing the prisoner. As always, he ignored Vale during his interrogation, and the reclusive defensive mage never seemed to mind. Indeed, the warlock met his gaze. Insolent wretch. 
then the reports of the acidic sandstorms in Sylvain have been your doing, Master Yarrow reasoned. An unfortunate accident. Are you from Sylvain in Tortoise? Are you probing me for information? I could summon your file from the Mages College records, but I find it far more personable to engage in a discussion. It feels violating otherwise. And Tortoise glanced toward his naked chest and limbs. We wouldn't want that now. But if this is a discussion, can I have your name? Master Yarrow told him. A healing mage. Indeed. Master Yarrow mirrored in Tortoise's previous response. Working under high healing mage Master Gentian, I presume, and Tortoise said. You are correct. Old bastard won't die, will he? No one on the High Council seems to, and Tortoise said. I am fond of Master Gentian and those he treats to prolong their lives. But at some point you must desire to take up his position. Perhaps some day. Everyone who works in the impenetrable castle aims to be in the inner circle of advisors. And Tortoise said cynically, You are familiar with the impenetrable castle, are you? Its reputation. Master Yarrow regarded the sorcerer warlock curiously. So, what are you doing in Kazerai, in Tortoise? I came to deliver a message. That ether is not the true Arxbon, Master Yarrow assumed. Yes. Is that it? I also wouldn't mind if I happened to run into piety. He relaxed into the conversation. And who is piety to you? My priest and my brother in faith. You claimed he was locked in these dungeons? Master Yarrow checked. Yes, piety let himself be captured, Tortoise said. Did he now? To prove his faith in Dentrimo. And as far as I can tell, piety wasn't in the cells we passed when we came in, so I'm confident he was successful in his efforts. I'm unaware if your heretical compatriot has escaped, but there are hundreds of additional cells. Master Yarrow gestured. The cells you passed are solely for new prisoners. They are moved after their punishment is determined. And are there corpses along the other cells as well, or is that just to intimidate the new blood? And Tortoise asked. They are everywhere. Master Yarrow held in his excitement at the idea. I see. So much for the High King's claiming mercy, and Tortoise said. Only for those who jeopardize the decisions of the spawn. Do I count in that category? You claim they should aspire for the dark path. Of course that could sway them. Why should they not? Because it would upset the institutionalized order, Master Yarrow said. You are aware of the truth, then? Tortoise asked, studying the healer. I do not care for your truth. What happens when people die, whether they are damned or blessed? But humankind relies on angels to aid us with their blessings. So we support the angels. It is the imperial position to pray to angels, and it is sacrilegious to do anything more than to ask that the demons do not curse our food, supplies, family members, whatever. If we were to upset the status quo, to introduce doubt into the hearts of the populace, there would be infighting and rioting in the streets. Brother would slaughter brother over the fate of their local spawn. It would be chaos that would not drive a prosperous realm. It would signal weakness to our Rysic neighbors in the north, and we would be overrun and enslaved. Is that such an immoral reason to ignore your inconsequential truth? And Tortoise knit his brows together, contemplating the argument. They have a right to know. Everyone does. They should know where their desired blessings derive from. It would be messy at first, but the fighting would not last. People will reach an understanding with one another. It may take generations, but it would happen. Do you plan on living for generations to find out? Not all of us have that much time. Some of us want to enjoy the lives we have, or the time we have them. If citizens can live out their days in peace, why would you stop that? Their knowing would not improve their quality of life in any way. But it could change the spawn's decisions. It would change public perception of them after their death. For the average spawn, no one would bother to remember them past the turn of the next age, Master Yarrow said. I don't see how you can only be concerned with someone's mortal life and not their immortal existence. I am a healer. Maintaining life and health is my primary duty. How can you only be concerned with the afterlife? 
we have no idea how much semblance of consciousness we will have once we die. Isn't it more ethical to promote happiness and prosperity where we know we can sense it? We're at a philosophical impasse. I would agree. So why am I speaking with you, Yaro? Antortis asked. When the guards brought me into this room, I assumed it would be a room for torture or executions. Master Yaro's mood soured. Who's to say it isn't for those exact purposes? The only furnishing in here is this restraint table. There are no weapons, he said. There's only a healing and a defensive mage. Hello, whoever you are. Not even a combative mage to intimidate me. You may be jumping to conclusions, Master Yaro said. If you cooperate, there will be no need to bring you physical harm. But I hope it comes to that. Oh, I see. So you want me to turn on my fellow believers by pretending to be empathetic to me? I'm never disingenuous when discussing philosophical thought, Master Yaro replied honestly. I find it intriguing, even if we disagree. And you are wrong. Entortus did not respond. Master Yarrow stood from his chair and approached the chained man. How many other people are there in this group of yours, besides piety? I will not tell you, he said with a resolved look to his teal eyes. We can compensate you for your knowledge, Master Yarrow offered, or trade for it. I would never turn traitor against my own. Do you know what's at stake? My life, Entortus assumed. A small price to wager. There is no wager. You will not escape from this place, Master Yarrow warned. You will die if you do not cooperate, but you will suffer a great deal before you do. The man smiled arrogantly. We'll see. If you think the wisdom of the incarcerators will save you, then you are mistaken. That only works once a tray of food lays in your cell. We are not providing you a chance to move off from this table. We will force-feed you if necessary to keep you alive, but you will not be able to flip your tray over to call the archdemon to free yourself. His face dropped its smug expression. How do you know Dantrima's wisdom? No matter, I have more than that to save myself, Entorta said. If you are referring to your abilities as a warlock, I'm afraid you are mistaken about that too. This castle has recently been blessed by Vuya to counteract Dantrima's previous cursed magic. The stone surrounding us is now impervious to further deterioration. Further, our resident defensive mage will prevent you from wielding any spells or curses throughout the interrogation process, or otherwise. Perhaps I have others coming for me, Entortus said defiantly. Noted, but they'll never find you down here. Few would know of the existence of these dungeons, and those who do would never betray that secret. If anyone comes searching... They'll see the regular cells on the ground level, and assume you aren't there. Perhaps they'll guess you escaped and cease their search. But we'll seize them, and that will be the end of it. You're assuming we only have a small following, that you couldn't seize them all, Entorta said. Master Yarrow paused briefly. Before we proceed, I'm going to teach you the rules of this interrogation. If you do not answer in a timely fashion, you'll get a cut on a sensitive part of your body. If you withhold information from me entirely, I'll break a bone. If you lie to me, you will lose something indefinitely. I still do not see any weapons, Entortus said. Master Yarrow's smile curled, erasing any semblance of the pleasant conversationalist. I am the weapon. Entortus huffed. How many followers are there in Sovain? Master Yarrow traced a finger over the man's ear. And Tortoise looked at Master Yarrow warily. That is hesitation. Promptly, Master Yarrow separated the cartilage of Entortus's ear using his sorcery. And Tortoise howled and strained against the chains, trying to claw at his bleeding ear with a hand that couldn't reach. The warlock tried to wield curses, but the defensive barrier surrounding his body blocked them. He could only cast his curses against himself, but they only impacted earth and stone, not human flesh, so they were rendered inert within the barrier. And Tortoise seemed to realize the existence of a discrepancy. How can you cast your cuts through another mage's barrier? Ah, yes, barrier penetration magic. Master Yarrow appreciated the additional opportunity to boast. It's my invention. Quite underrated magic, actually. It started as a method for a healing mage to aid another performing surgery. Eventually, it was recognized for the marvel that it is, 
though not by who I anticipated. Now I use it for this, and if you don't answer my question, I will have to respond in kind. You bastard, I won't talk. Master Yarrow smiled and snapped the man's bottom ribs. After Antortus exhibited a reaction and suffered through the pain, Master Yarrow healed the bones to crack again later. How many? Through tears, Antortus shook his head. That's still withholding information, Master Yarrow said. He broke his hip, where much of his weight rested. Antortus desperately tried to shift, but to no avail, given the limited slack on the restraints. They went on like that until Master Yarrow broke Antortus's femur for the second time, and the man caved. Twelve! There was hesitation, so you'll receive a cut. Would you prefer nostril or eye? Nostril. He flinched against the ripping sensation along his nose's flesh. Blood seeped down his face to meet the pool of blood from his ear. And Tortoise looked to Master Yarrow, surprised he honored the request. Where are the others? Master Yarrow asked. Spreading the word through the realm. That may constitute as a hesitation. No, please. Yes, that's right. Beg. Satisfaction filled Master Yarrow's chest, and the corners of his mouth curled upward. All right, I will allow it. Tell me the names and descriptions of each person. Who shall I start with? Whoever you are least fond of. Petal. A florist? No, a harper. A bitch. Why do you dislike her? And Tortoise hesitated. Master Yarrow cut a deep slice across in Tortoise's eye, reminding him of their arrangement. Following a howl, and Tortoise gave up his explanation. I believe that piety took a liking to her. She wrote songs to further our cause, the kind that stuck with people long after they had heard them, the kind that make people think. Piety valued her talents for spreading our message. I was always jealous of the attention she received because of that. Where was she sent? She stayed in so vain. She wouldn't do well on the road. She's blind, and Torta said. Shouldn't be too hard to track down. She summoned Dantrema as well, and possesses the abilities of a dark war lass. Anything else I should know about Petal? She's the most dangerous of us. Then it will get easier after we capture her, Master Yarrow said with a cruel side smile before continuing his interrogation. In three days, between his other responsibilities, Master Yarrow had obtained the names of all but one of the demonists. The results had demanded five digits from Entortus's hands, three toes, seventeen broken and mended bones, an eye, and dozens of slashes across his nose, ears, tongue, and remaining fingertips. For sheer enjoyment, Master Yarrow also broke a couple of his teeth. When possible, he preferred to inflict injuries symmetrically between the left and right sides of Entortus's body. Since the current interrogation concerned the last remaining fugitive, Yarrow was willing to remove organs and risk death. And Tortoise recoiled at the mere sight of Master Yarrow upon his entrance into the torture chamber. You know what you have to do today, Master Yarrow instructed. And Tortoise shook his head with a piteous look to his remaining eye. Tell me the final name, Master Yarrow instructed. No. You've just lied to me. You will tell me. I'm not telling you! I gave you the option to save your favorite for last, but now it is time to turn them over. If they were shrewd, they would have made the most of the extra time you have provided. If they were not, well. Master Yarrow magically cracked in Tortoise's collarbones. And Tortoise cried out, but did not resist against his restraints. Any hope he had in escaping had been beaten out of him by the end of the first day. He laid covered in blood and shit and sweat and piss. Tell me. Now. Master Yarrow laid a hand upon his chest, pushing in on his mending ribs. And Tortoise blinked back tears. Master Yarrow healed the bones, but then cut a slice across in Tortoise's remaining cornea. In Tortoise, you are like a blister on the bottom of my foot. It is so tedious to constantly press you. And Tortoise whimpered. Blood dribbled from Tortoise's eye and met with the caked blood from old wounds to his ears and nose. Master Yarrow couldn't have been more delighted. If the warlock refused again, Master Yarrow would sink his hand into the man's lung and rip it open with his freshly fouled fingernails. Loronio. Loronio is the name of the last. An aristocrat? Master Yarrow questioned, narrowing his eyes at the name that fell outside of the standard convention. A harpy. 
and Tortoise said, defeated. That doesn't sound like a harpy name, not when the harpy's ambassador is Brindlewing. Yarrow touched a fingernail to his forehead. Do you dare lie to me? No, no, she was born along Woja's border. Her parents assigned her name liberally. Did this harpy obtain the ability to summon Dantrima as well? Master Yarrow asked, curiously. No. Did they try it? Master Yarrow kept his finger trained on the demoness's face. Yes, her ceremony failed. Why would she follow the religion, then, let alone spread it? She saw Dantrima. She believes. And Tortoise's eye flicked between Master Yarrow's finger and his face. The concept of a warless harpy would be daunting, given their existing strength. Magic is our only defense against the monsters of this world. If they were to obtain the capabilities of the Archdemons, it could end this realm. Strange that a torture mage would concern himself with the well-being of the realm. My concerns are not for you to ponder, Master Yarrow said. Where did she go? She stayed in Wojet with her family, and Tortoise shook his head. Then, of the noble Strix's four eyes, all were sacrificed, but only three dark warlocks were created. You, Piety, and Petal. Is that correct? Yes. Good. Farewell, Antortis. It has been a pleasure.